here's a little overview of the content that we've got for you. We'll look at selection criteria, inspection of glassware, user considerations, and how you can reduce the risks. And we'll also talk a little bit about the disposal of glassware. Glass has some great characteristics, all combined in one single material, and that means you can use one container for many purposes. It's highly transparent, and that's probably the reason that it was used by alchemists, because they could see what was happening in the container, and you could see gold being formed from lead. It's got excellent chemical resistance, and so it can be used with pretty much any chemical without concerns, although there are some exceptions. It's impermeable to gases, which is very important to some applications in chemistry, where you have materials that are sensitive to some gases, and it's also got very good thermal shock resistance. You can go all the way down to liquid nitrogen temperatures and all the way up to several hundred degrees. It's also non-porous, so it can be easily cleaned, sterilized, autoclaved and depyrogenated. And as a material, it forms a strong, rigid and stable container. The safety really begins with quality and also um, selection criteria. So there are two types of glass that are commonly used in um, the lab, uh, and that's soda lime and borosilicate. Soda lime is usually used for disposable glassware, so things like pasteur pipettes and culture tubes. Um, and this application tends to not involve heat, and it would be something where chemical resistance and maybe pH sensitivity aren't important. Um, and the formulation is very simple. It's sand plus soda plus lime. For a silicate class is more commonly used for lab glassware. Um, and this was originally invented by Otto Schott around 150 years ago. There are two types, 3.3 and 5.1, and it's used to make a range of products from beakers to volumetrics to chromatography vials. The big advantage of for silicate is that it's got excellent thermal and chemical resistant pro properties. So it works really well in the lab, especially when we're heating glassware, using solvents and such. And in co contrast to soda lime, borosilicate contains boric acid, which gives it its elastic properties. Um, now let's take a look at um, labware and inspection of labware, which is also very important. So we should really be inspecting labware before each use, and that's even before the first use, when you first purchase a glass product. And we should also be wearing protective equipment for this. Um, equipment specific safety precautions should be followed um, to prevent broken glass injuries by selecting and using proper PPE. And process specific PPE may include uh, cut resistant gloves, full length lab coats and gowns, and maybe a face shield and some safety goggles. These provide protection of the skin, including the forearms, fingers and the eyes. And all research labs should have cut puncture resistant gloves like Kevlar or Deflex and an improved sharps disposal container large enough to contain broken glass. Inspection is the first step before working with any piece of glass. In addition to the dimensional inspection, quality inspectors check the chips, cracks and blisters. One thing that's important when inspecting is lighting. So usually you require 1000 lux and this alongside a black and white backdrop can really help to improve the visibility when inspecting the glass. In terms of selection of materials, borosilica glass is a very good choice because it's highly resistant to most chemicals that you're likely to use and virtually all organic substances. Only very hazardous substances at high temperatures, for example, hydrochloric acid, will degrade the glass. Some care needs to be taken with alkaline-based cleaning temperatures, um, which can cause corrosion at high temperatures, but it's best to avoid cleaning above 70 degrees and also to keep the cycle as short as possible. It's also a good idea with glass, wa glass washers to prevent glass-to-glass -glass contact, as this can damage the glassware. Um, avoiding glass-to-glass -glass contact is also a really good idea when storing the glassware too, and it's best to place the glass products on shelves or in cupboards, but not touching each other. When storing glassware, uh, remember to keep it away from the shelf edges in case it's knocked over and falls down. 
Metal spatulas or metal clamps can actually scratch glassware, so it's best to use PTFE coated versions of these. And also to avoid abrasions and serious personal injuries, um, spatulas used to scrape solids in glassware can be a bit of an issue. We do offer some products that assist with lab safety. Um, for example, here you can see Super Duty, um, and these are products which feature a reinforced rim and in some cases reinforced walls. And this includes products like beakers and volumetric wear. And we also get a lot of feedback from our customers that these products can last longer than conventional glassware, um, especially if they're frequently being used in lab washes, so they can be a more economical choice. Um, this is probably a, quite a common instance in the lab, um, broken pieces of glass, um, for example, filter flask arms, which are attached to hoses. Um, so we recommend using alternatives to these. Um, for example, a plas plastic tubing with just a glass flask or plastic, a plastic screw thread in connector for an Earl and Meyer flask. Um, and dropping. Dropping is a really obvious problem with glassware. It may break or it may not break, but even if it doesn't break, it may be damage, damaged and it may fail later down the line. So we recommend that if you do drop glassware, you actually dispose of it and you don't use it any further, even if it doesn't break. And this shows a carrying system that we've developed for larger bottles, the Duran bottle carrying system. Large bottles can be really difficult to handle when transporting and when pouring as well. So we developed this bottle carrier to facilitate this. And you can see in the video that it's much more controlled and pouring becomes much easier when using the Duran bottle carrier. And we've also developed a version which allows two people to share the weight of the bottle. And that's typically used for larger volumes, such as 20 litres. And this is something we often see, bottles being tipped to get the maximum liquid out of the bottles. And this is quite common in HPLC labs. And it's quite risky because the bottle can actually tip and spill. We do offer a solution to this problem. Um, this is the Duran HPLC conical base reservoir bottle, um, which has a conical base and this allows maximum recovery from the bottle without the need to tip it, so it's a much safer option. And if you're using jointed wear or doing any sort of clamping, it's really important to ensure that the vessel is clamped correctly and having the clamp near the base of the flask is less likely to stress the neck of the flask. Um, and we also need to pay attention to fittings. Um, after tubing, the many different types of glass fittings present the next biggest potential for accidental cuts. Um, from the barbed glass nipples to the ground glass joints, when it comes to um, making fittings, problems arise. So take care when making and also undoing connections as well. We also have a range of safety coated glassware. So the major advantage of the plastic coating is that it protects from some of the disadvantages of glassware it protects from scratching and also if you do drop the bottle and it breaks, the plastic coating keeps everything together and this gives you more time to transfer the contents from the broken bottle into a new container. And this is um, the Duran utility bottle. So we launched this next generation lab bottle several years ago um, and many of its features focus around safety. The bottle's slimmer, so it has a much smaller diameter and it has side grips to prevent slipping with wet hands. The cap is cone shaped and this gives a much more secure grip than a conventional cap, which prevents droppages. It also includes colour coded tags so that the same lab wear can be used in specific experiments. Um, and when you're working under pressure or vacuum, this is quite challenging um, for glassware. You do have to make sure you're using the correct glassware for this application and it's important to inspect the glassware before each use as well. So when you're using glassware in a vacuum application, 
we should be using vacuum rated heavy wall glassware like Duran Pressure Plus, for example. Um, we do offer a small range of pressure resistant lab bottles, so Duran Pressure Plus, and these will allow safe working under vacuum up to 1.5 bar. Um, some customers actually use them for shipping as they're a, ro a more robust version of the standard lab bottle. So some general tips for heating glassware now. Um, number one, hot glassware looks the same as cooled glassware, so it's really important not to touch it and we should be using protective gloves as well. So typically borosilicate glass can be heated up to 500 degrees, but this might be limited by any accessories like a plastic cap, for example. Um, in thermal shock, so when something experiences a quick change in temperature, like freezing, borosilicate is really suited to this as it's quite resistant to thermal shock. Um, ideally, a water bath should be used for heating over flames as it's safer. If you're using a hot plate, then we should be starting in the lowest setting and adding the glassware to that lowest setting, um, not just starting on high from the get-go. Um, it's important not to let the contents of the container boil dry because the product can then overheat and it can introduce thermal stress, which isn't visible. And related to heating is autoclaving, which is extremely common in the lab. And we recommend that only borosilicate glass is autoclaved and not soda lime glass. When you're autoclaving, uh, we should be wearing full PPE and some liquids and media are prone to foaming. So don't fill the container more than three quarters full. This will allow liquid expansion and prevent overflowing. It's also very important not to fully tighten the screw cap because then the bottle can become pressurized and might explode. So always adequately loosen the cap to prevent the pressure from building up. When opening the autoclave door, be careful for steam um, because it gets hot and also give the products time to cool before you handle them. Without adequate cooling, some liquids can boil when disturbed and there's a safety issue there. So in summary, um, be aware of the manufacturing and the quality of the finished product that you're purchasing because this really does influence performance and safety. Um, and make sure that the application and the product are suitable. Um, and think, you know, am I working under pressure? Do I need pressure resistant glassware here? And also consider thermal shock and the effect that sudden changes in temperature might have.